We have Instagram and uh, Facebook and you can connect with people. Everything that sells is about our lovely poverty. I would hope that the Indian audience looks at what kind of films we need to make to bring out our stories for a global audience. The film was also screened in Vancouver Film Festival. How was the response over there? Very positive. And we won the award for best, best social so empowered film wow. on women. <laughs> yes, and uh, wow. it was our first screening um, <coughs> publicly. So I was actually quite shocked because everyone was sobbing in the audience. And I said, wow, uh, wow. I guess everyone needs Kleenex. <laughs> so I was actually saying we should have these little Warrior Queen of Jhansi Kleenex outside every theater. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a good response. Then it also showed at the Shanghai Film Festival, and I yeah. believe um, everyone enjoyed it. We were there to witness, uh, of course, Vancouver, we, I was there. But New York, we witnessed a wonderful reaction at the Asia Society, um, where we had some amazing people. And I was always worried. I said, this is a hardcore New York audience who doesn't crack a smile for anything. So I said, boy, <coughs> we, we both were very pleased because that particular very educated audience, I have to say, they loved the film and they did give us a standing ovation. But that doesn't mean everyone's going to love it. I hope everyone likes it. But New York, uh, the audience loved it. So, Right. Do you think uh, get going for a film going to these festivals, it helps in theatrical releases? I actually didn't show it at many festivals, only at Shanghai. Vancouver, we turned down, in fact, uh, we were invited to the Zurich Film Festival, um, and they're wonderful, but you know, you can't have festivals and then the release date very far. Yeah. So we just kind of decided, since we already had a distributor, that <coughs> there's no need to go, you know, at all these festivals, because I think you do go, uh, uh, maybe it's for awards, I'm not that aware of all this, because as I said, this is my first directorial debut it was about me wanting to make this film and to share it with the world I didn't get into all the nitty-gritty because I may have never made this film because now I know how difficult it is <laughs> to get it out there that I may have just said you know what forget it <laughs> I'm not doing it and in fact when I did all this work I was looking for another director I went to London to get Amma Sante actually and her managers and um, you know independent talent uh, told me that can we just ask you why you're not directing it and I said just because I want to enjoy sitting on set and enjoying this work while someone else directs it and they said but you've done all the work and you've done all the HODs and you know it'll take a new director uh, a, t a little bit of time a lot of time and then I talked to Devika again and she was like you know why why don't you do it and so it was more like I think it evolved into something we just kind of felt the authenticity would be there because a lot of my HODs here like Vikram Gaikwad said if you're not directing it I'm not doing it so I was like but why he said I don't want some outsider to come and do this then they won't be able to do the right hmm. way of doing it and I said no no I'll be there I'll make sure but I wasn't able to convince my India team so, you know what I decided might as well so there was a time when your films were regional specific culture specific for example, this film, now the barriers are, you know, blurring. These uh, language and uh, cultural barriers are blurring. Even this film is releasing in English as well as Marathi. Three languages, as you said. So, what is your opinion about that, both of you? I think we're at a new stage in making movies. It's a very globalized world. We have Instagram and uh, Facebook, and you can connect with people from, you know, every corner of the, the globe, which is incredible, but it's why movies like this are starting to be made. And, and people, I think, are more open to hearing different dialects and different languages spoken just naturally throughout. And I think when you do speak many different dialects, you, if you're speaking to someone, you may speak in Hindi. If you're speaking to someone else, you may speak in English. And it's a natural thing where your brain is just able to process that um, and that's kind of what we wanted to show is that if you sp if, if you if you can speak 
like that, then yeah. you will, depending on, on who you're talking to. Um, and, you know, with, with Hollywood, there's such a small group of, of movies that are about India in general um, that I think this is a totally different kind of movie. And to, to be able to tell the rich history of India and these, this iconic warrior queen who existed, who no one I've talked to in America even has heard about. Um, or London. Or, or London. Or London has even heard about is pretty incredible. Um, and I think it'll just widen the reach of knowing about India and Indian history and not just saying, okay, Slumdog Millionaire, one other movie, and that's the only idea I have in my head about yeah. India. It's kind of opening their poverty. eyes to I a lot of stuff. I loved all these movies, you know, Slumdog and Monsoon Wedding and all great movies. But living in India uh, I as an Indian, in two countries, because I do spend a lot of time. I have a home in India, and you know, Devika, of course, comes back and forth. But I have always, having taught Indian classical dance for years there and performed both at Lincoln Center and um, at Symphony Space, I have always resented America looking at my country as a poor country. And I've always been like a spitfire talking about it, that enough with our poverty. Everything that sells is about our lovely poverty. Have you ever seen the great heritage of India? You know, I, I always say, we didn't come to England. You know, they came to us. They came to us for our textiles. They're the ones who wanted this for their industrial revolution. They increased the taxes on our, um, you know, uh, exports, but the imports had no taxes. So nobody knows that our textile industry had been destroyed because India even now has such a rich fabric and heritage. Right. And we in general are not good at doing any PR about ourselves, our country. We just don't know how to package anything. And so what we've always packaged out is our lovely poverty and slums and rape. And I'm not saying nothing exists, but what about the greatness of India? What about its beautiful history and culture and heritage. We've never talked about it. So tell me the last time a Hollywood film or a British film on an Indian character has been made with an Indian woman lead. Lead. When I say lead, it is a lead, not it's someone lead. who's playing second to the male. Yeah, correct. So I question that, that we have all these Baiza Bai and we have Begum of Abad, then we have Jhasi Ki Rani, and you've got many from Bergao and Ka Karnataka, and these amazing women, but we do not have them out in the global world. So that is one of the regrets I feel, that I hope more people do that. And it was a huge challenge. Uh, you know, they want to then put you, are you an art house film, or are you a commercial film? If you're an art house film, not many want to support you. But then again, if you have too much of Hindi and Marathi, anything more than 75%, people don't like to have it. But then do you want to have very big names of actors? Then the actor, whether it's good or bad, the packaging is good. So as a filmmaker, I wanted to go with the truth. I was not very sensible about trying to say, let's get the right names. I had a brilliant uh, you know, casting director team in, uh, in London, uh, the Hubbards. I had the editor who was just amazing, and uh, I worked with him, Devika worked with him very closely. He was the editor of Game of Thrones, yeah. so Oral Otti. So he's done an amazing job with Rafi, uh, both of them. I also think just putting it in a box is what everyone wants to do. And so everyone's like, oh, it's a Bollywood film. It must be because it's about an Indian woman. And the only way there's a movie about an Indian woman is if it's a, a Bollywood film, which just goes to show that everyone wants to put people into boxes and put this movie into a box and say, well, if it is action and it is this rich um, landscapes and it's a period film, right? So it has these amazing locations, then how can it be an art house movie? But then it's in these different languages and how So we found that it's 
it's, it's a, a new a kind of movie, <laughs> and people are only interested in see. You know, either it's a Marvel or it's an art house, and finding Ooh. something between in has Vegas, been difficult they for said, people are there to any songs? swallow. Are there any songs? Everyone asks if there are songs in the yeah, film. Yeah, because they attach India with uh, Bollywood. Bollywood with songs. Right, right, but, but it's not Bollywood, but, right? Yeah, it's not. But they said if she's a brown actress, so imagine in Hollywood, how many? Look at our population of India. Look at our industry, one of the largest in the world. Then why is it we have only a handful, if at all, who have made it to Hollywood? We have so much talent. So I question that. I think everyone should question it. Correct. Finally, you know, this is a film where uh, it's releasing in India, it's releasing in US. The audiences are completely different mm -hmm. because Indian people know the basic of the who Story. was Lakshmi yes. Bai, who was Jansi Kirani. US people, they don't know it. No, no, they know nothing. Yeah. Some of them thought I had made her up. I said, no, I haven't made her yeah. up. So what can US audience or what can Indian ex audience expect from this film on the day of? I would hope that the Indian audience looks at what kind of films we need to make to bring out our stories for a global audience. Um, they understand the style that it's made in, which is we have to keep too realistic. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if I suddenly had a song in the middle of it, I don't think anyone in America would really um, take it that seriously because it's about the Rani. We also tried to make everything as natural as possible. I mean, Very makeup, makeup was none, basically yeah, non-existent. Um, oh. There was no makeup. There we was obviously there was, yeah, you know, camera, but it wasn't the like eyeliner. It wasn't yeah, the yeah. There's no glam mascara. Makeup. There's no glam. Yeah. yeah, it would be the makeup she would have, almost like the berry lips or the the kajal or that kind of thing, which is just what she would have had in that time. Um, but none of the eyeshadow and contouring and any you know okay. any of that stuff that is now very popular on screen. Yes, yes, we haven't done that and. I think <coughs> Vikram Dada, who was, who's won many awards here, I know he's won it for Bal Gandharva, for Barfi, for... He wouldn't have come on this project if I had a different vision, and he told me that. He said we were both on the same page, where it was fantastic because you said less, and I said less, and he actually gave me an insight that is the first time I worked with an actress who after her makeup is done, she doesn't look in the mirror and gets up and walks off. And he said, I used to be stunned because everyone otherwise tells him exactly what to do. He said, she just completely relied in how I was doing it. And she said, she'd just get up and like walk out. And he, he's the one who told me, he said, it's, it's amazing for me to see this. So I said, that's good because we want to see the Rani. We're not looking to see an actor necessarily. I want to see my Lakshmi Bai over there in her different forms as a wife, as a widow, as a warrior, and to see that you know transformation Transition, in yeah. her. And, and I think uh, I'm hoping that the Indian audience um, enjoy it from a historical perspective, and not just their Rani, what their Rani was up against. She was up against the East India Company. It was uh, the largest corporation bailout at that time. It was not the British Raj. They were operating as an East India Company. The British Raj came in because she destroyed the East India Company. So she did achieve something. We have at this point a kind of, I think, trailer, 8 million outreach on social media. And I'm enjoying the comments, especially even from the Indians who are saying, Are, what did she do? She took a little lot of people and fought and died. And that's the end. <laughs> so I'm hoping they can actually see what she did do, because yeah. this film is discussing what she achieved and how 90 years later, why you need so many people along the way to help you get your ultimate freedom. Correct. Correct. On that note, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Lovely you so meeting much. you. Yeah. Hello and Namaskar. I'm Swati Bhise, the director of The Warrior Queen of Jhansi. Hi, my name is Devika Bhise and you can see us on Box Office India. Please like, share and subscribe.